Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, catch of the day, including Neapolitan fish soup and swordfish, Sicilian style. Okay, now we have to really get serious here because today I'm going to make you a dish that my Nona Galasso made. She was from Avellino, which is near Naples. And there they make some beautiful dishes with tomatoes, especially, you know, pasta and tomatoes, but they also make wonderful soups, zuppa. And today we're making a zuppa di pesce alla Napoletano. So we're going to make a soup in the style of Naples. And we have to start out with a variety of fish and shellfish. Now you can use whatever is at hand, but this is basically what went into her dish. So we had clams, and in Naples they would be very tiny clams. Very tiny, very tasty. So whatever local clams you have, you use them. When you get them, you want to look at them. They should feel really heavy in your hand. They should be closed tight as a drum. If they're not, you don't want to use that. If they're cracked, you don't want to use them. So you buy yourself about four pounds of clams. You wash them really well, sit them in some water, let them sit there for a little while. Some people like to put oatmeal in the water so that everything spits out, so that there's no sand or anything. So you want them very clean. So we have our clams, and then we want to use some scallops. So here we have some dry scallops, not the wet injected scallops, which you don't want because those are puffed up with a sodium mixture that is really not very good for you. So you want to always ask for dry pack sea scallops. So here they are. And then one of her favorites, of course, was squid. You know it as calamari. And for this dish, you want to get it so that it's small. You don't want real big calamari because it takes longer for them to cook. So I would say about, you know, five inches if you can find them. And the tentacles too if you want to use them. And then we have some raw shrimp here that's been peeled and deveined. So how are we going to start this dish? Well, first we're going to cut up some garlic. So you want about four garlic cloves for this. and You just want to cut a couple of them in half. This is just going to flavor the liquid that's going to be left over from the clams. So the clams go into a pot. Yes. Put them all in a pot. I turn on the heat. I add some white wine. Now you can add, oh, about a half to a cup of white wine in here. This is going to help make that nice sauce that we're going to have later. The halved garlic cloves go in, parsley goes in. Make sure it's flat leaf Italian parsley and not curly parsley. I'm not saying that just because I'm Italian, but because it has a much better flavor. So you let those clams open. We have to put a cover on them, though, to make sure that we keep all of that nice juice inside the pot. So you cover these clams. And you have a little patience in about five minutes or so, you check. All of those clams should be opened. If any did not open, then you discard them. Once they're open, then we're going to drain the clams, we're going to shuck them, and we're going to save the juice for our sauce. So while the clams are cooking, we want to get ready the other in ingredients for the sauce. And for that, we're going to need onion. So about a cup of onion. I like to use Vidalia because it's a nice sweet onion. And we're going to need more garlic. Again, two cloves, just cut in half. Two fresh cloves of garlic. And then we need some fennel. This is a really wonderful vegetable. If you've never eaten it, you have no idea what you're missing. And it's really great in soups and stews. So it has this nice white bulb. And then you have these nice frilly little green fronds. And when you buy it, the outside of it may seem a little bit rusty. See, you see right there, there's a little rust spot there. So all you really do is shave that off with a vegetable peeler. In fact, I usually go around the outside, take off any kind of rust spots. I wash the vegetable really well, and then I'm not wasting a lot of it. 
so just go around and clean off the outer layer of the, the fennel, finocchio as it's called in Italian. So we want, this is a fairly large one, so I'm going to cut this in half. Most Italians will tell you they like to eat this raw in a salad. Usually at the end of the meal, this is something that they would have. So it's a very popular restaurant, uh, very popular vegetable in restaurants. So I'm going to take this core out, because that's a little tough right there, and get rid of that. And then I'm going to cut it again, and I'm going to cut it here, and just chop this. This is going to give a really nice flavor to the sauce. And it's not overpowering. A lot of people say, oh, you know, I really don't like that fennel. That, that licorice flavor, but it, it's really very, very mild. So if you don't like this, well, then you could use celery, but how boring would that be? So here we have some fennel, and you want some of those little fronds, too, because that's flavor. So I just take a few of those off the top. This is great when you're grilling fish, too, to add a few of these to the grill if you want to. So you take some of those little, little wispy fronds, and you just chop them up, and that's going to go in our sauce as well. Almost reminds me of dill, because it has that kind of a consistency. All right, so let's see where we are with our clams, because I'm smelling them right now. Let's see where we are. Ooh, they are smelling really good, and they are open. So, we are open for business. I'm going to take these off right into the sink because here I have some cheesecloth lining a strainer and I'm pouring these right through that because I want to save all of that juice to flavor my sauce. Now in they go. Now we're going to have to let them sit there until they are cool enough for me to handle. I mean, I do have asbestos fingers, but we have to wait. So I'm going to put this back on the burner because we're going to use the same pot that we did the uh, clams in. All right, so now we have our fennel. We have the fronds. I'm going to put them in a bowl. And we have that onion, the mild flavored Vidalia. So I'm going to take those over. And now we're going to add some olive oil. So a little extra virgin olive oil in the pan. Add the onions. That was one onion. And the fennel and the fronds go in. We're going to cook that down a little bit until it softens, and then I'll add the garlic. I don't want to put the garlic in right away because it could burn. So I always add it towards the end of whatever onion mixture I'm cooking. So a little bit more olive oil, and we're going to let that go until it wilts down. So while that's cooking, let me tell you a little bit about the fish, how we're going to prepare it. So we have our scallops. Let me wipe off my board here a little bit so I can show you what we want to do with that. And for these, in order for them to cook a little faster, I like to cut them in half. See, just like that. I just cut them in half. You could put them in whole if you wanted to, but I think it's easier to eat if you cut them in half. And they're really not going to take very long to cook. This is going to make quite a hearty soup, a zuppa. You know, in different parts of Italy, soup has gone by different names. If you were in the Marche region of Italy, a soup like this, a, a fish soup, would be called a brodetto. If you were in Tuscany, it would be called a caciuco. So depending on where you are, the names will vary. So there are our scallops, all of them. They go back in the bowl. And now the squid, which is actually the first thing we're going to cook because this takes the longest amount of time. So here they are, cleaned squid bodies, you see? 
the tentacles are also nice to use with this. And I like to just cut them into one quarter inch pieces because that, again, makes it a lot easier uh, to eat. And I can tell just by cutting these are very, very tender. So these are very, very fresh. All right, so there's the rest of them. So we have all of that. And this is going with this. And then the last seafood we have is shrimp. So these are just medium shrimp. They've been deveined, see, and shelled. Sometimes if you save the shells, you can also use them make, to make a fish broth. So while that fish is, while you're looking at it, I'm going to check over here and see what we've got because we don't want this to burn. Yeah. All right, the onions and the fennel are cooking down. So now we have to add the other great ingredients to this. And this is part of why this is a Neapolitan a zuppa di pesce because we're using plum tomatoes. And we all know where the best plum tomatoes come from. They come from around Naples, of course. And so when I buy plum tomatoes, I buy the real thing. You see this can? It says DOP on it. And that means that these tomatoes, San Marzano, come from the area where these tomatoes grow, in San Marzano. If it doesn't say DOP on the label, it's not a San Marzano. So make sure you look for that. So what's so great about San Marzano? Well, they have fantastic flavor. When you open this can, you see them whole. They're never, never peeled. I mean, they're never pureed. They're always whole like this. And most Italian nonas would just squeeze these by hand when they were making like a tomato sauce. But for this soup, we do have to puree them. So we're going to puree them. And this is why I'm wearing an apron, because we're going to paint the kitchen while we're at it. So you can either do this in a blender, or you can do it with an immersion blender like this. I like this gadget because it makes things very easy. So we're going to puree those tomatoes. And you see how pulpy they are. They're very pulpy. They're not watery. OK, that, that looks good. All right, so let me take that off. So there are our tomatoes, about three, three and a half cups. But before we add them, we have to add this. OK, let me take the cover off, because I made these last summer. You want to know what this is? Hot pepper paste. Yeah. And you see this little dinky winky spoon? That's because that's all you need. So I got those chili peppers out of my garden, and I pureed them with some salt and olive oil. I put them in a jar, and then I have it whenever I want it, and I keep it in the refrigerator. But before we add that, we have to add our garlic, because now we're ready. They go in, and going to give this just a little bit more olive oil. And I want to let those cloves just kind of cook down. OK, next we have to add the pepper paste. Now, if you're not into making pepper paste, you can just use dried red pepper flakes that you find in the grocery store. But, you know, I just think this is a much better idea. So this tiny little spoon, I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny, tiny bit and put it in there, because that's going to pack quite a wallop. That jar is going to last me at least two years. So you mix that in, or you're putting in the dried red pepper flakes, or you're leaving it out entirely if you don't like it hot. OK, so that's looking good. So now we need to work with the fish. So we're going to put in the squid and the tomatoes. There's the tomatoes. Now we're going to let that cook a little while, because now we have to shuck the clams. All right, look at those tomatoes. They look beautiful. So we're going to add now the liquid from the clams. That's part of our broth. 
I'm going to stir that around a little bit. So now what we have to do here is add the seafood in the order in which it takes the longest time to cook. So we're going to start with the squid. So the squid goes in. And you can see now that this is going to be really a very nice, thick zuppa di pesce. So once the squid is in, and it's not going to take long to cook, you cover it back up. All right, we got to try this to make sure that our squid are cooked. So what I do is just fish out a piece. Mmm, nice and tender. Okay, so oh. scallops, cape sante in Italian. They go in because that's the next fish in the order of cooking. And that's not going to take long at all. Then after that, we will add the shrimp and last, the clams. But we have to do one more thing. We have to season this. Now's the time for seasoning. So you know the Italians always say, quanto basta, whatever amount you want to add. So whatever amount you want to add, that's the seasoning. So salt, a grinding of pepper, and then I'm going to add some lemon juice to this at the end. So I'm going to give that a little stir. Look how beautiful this is looking. Wow, this is a real serious zuppa di pesce. Do you want to know what one of my best tools in the kitchen is? A cast iron pan. Yes, indeed. I do everything in this. Casseroles, I make sauces, sautés, and it's great on the grill when you want to do a beautiful swordfish or any kind of fish dish. So, the first thing we have to do is get the grill going, and then we're going to put this seasoned pan on that grill empty for about 10 minutes while we make the sauce for our fish. So let me get this going. So one of my favorite things to do on the grill is Sicilian style swordfish, pesce spada, because this is the golden fish of Sicily. When you walk through the Ballaro market, you see these swordfish with the heads and the spikes way up in the air, the swordfish itself, beautiful fish. So this is a signature fish of Sicily. So we have about five ounces of swordfish here. That's uh, each one of those is enough as a serving. So the first thing I'm going to do because I'm putting this on the grill is I want to dry the fish off with paper towels because we're going to put this into a dry pan. And if the pan is really, really hot, the fish is not going to stick. So dry the fish off really well. I usually just leave a paper towel there and set it aside while we make the sauce. So the sauce for this starts with some cherry tomatoes. So these are cherry tomatoes that I'm just going to cut in half. Now, if you were in Sicily, of course, you would be getting some really, really sweet tasting cherry tomatoes. One of my favorites is the pianolo. The pianolo, which has a pointed end at the very base of the tomato. And they're sweet as sugar. And this is the tomato that a lot of Sicilians like to dry. So there are all of our tomatoes. I'm going to put them back in the bowl here. So tomatoes is one of the key ingredients. And now let's talk about some of the other things that are going to go into this. Here we have a green olive called Cerignola. You find this in southern Italy. But you could use any olive you wanted to. They're not super duper bitter. They're bitter enough though. And you can buy them either pitted or with the pits. If you get them with the pits, of course, you're going to have to take the pit out, which means you're going to have to slice around them or use an olive pitter if you have it. I just use a can and smash them. Then we need some capers because capers are very popular in Sicilian cooking. You know why? Because there's a little island off of Sicily called Pantelleria, where it's very windy, and that's where capers grow very well. So you can either get capers in salt like this, you see, capers and salt, which you will have to rinse very well. Or you can buy capers in brine. 
that you don't have to do anything to. So either one is your choice. So we have capers here. And then we have some raisins. Now you're thinking, what do raisins have to do with a fish dish? Well, this goes back again to that underlying flavor that you find in Sicily, which is called agro dolce, sweet and sour. And this is the sweet element. And we need some wine. So let's start with putting some olive oil in a saute pan. A little extra virgin olive oil and some cloves of garlic. Two cloves of garlic, just sliced. You don't even have to mince them up. So you want to flavor the oil with the garlic. And then it's simply putting all of these ingredients in because this is a very quick sauce. And really, for fish, fresh fish, really fresh fish, you don't want to tinker with it too much. So this sauce is just light. It's beautiful. You can put it either over or under the fish if you want to. So once those garlic cloves get a little color on them, we're going to add the tomatoes. And we want these to kind of soften a little bit, so turn that down. We're going to add the olives. A very quick sauce. And very pretty, by the way. The capers, which have a little bit of a bitter taste to them. They go in. Now we want to give this a little bit of salt over the top. Some white wine. Stir that around. Add your raisins. We're using golden raisins here, but you could use anything. That goes in, gives that a little bit of a sweet flavor. We're going to cover this pan and cook this maybe for about 10 minutes. And then it's going to be ready to go over the fish. Okay, you see that pan? It's perfectly dry and it's smoking hot. So now we can take the fish. This is going to take about three to four minutes on each side. What you don't want to do is overcook the fish. And if you're really not sure, have an instant read thermometer ready. I like it at 145, so not really, really overcooked. So there it is. I'm going to lower the top, sing a song or two, and then I'm going to flip that fish over and cook the other side. Look at this beautiful soup with all of that wonderful seafood, the clams, the scallops, the shrimp. Isn't it beautiful? And it's in this wonderful tomato broth that we made with the clam juice over bread because that is the great way to serve it. And then you could garnish it with a couple clams that you kept out in the shell. And you could serve it with extra bread on the side, all ready to eat. Beautiful. A zuppa di pesce. And then here we went to Sicily and we made this delicious swordfish and topped it with this beautiful tomato olive caper sauce. And then just added a few pine nuts over the top. Remember, it has a little bit of raisins in it too for that nice agro dolce taste. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao!